It's actually quite easy. Whenever I get to review a good product, I'm in a good mood. And today I'm in a fantastic mood. And that's why I'm gonna run with the flow. And wherever I run with the flow, mistakes might happen. So just keep that in mind. And the fact that I'm not even listing the device's name in the title, it's not supposed to be clickbait, but I kind of wanted to keep it at least a mystery for a few seconds. Because even though I had already quite high expectations whenever I saw this device to be released, I did not expect to happen what happened. It completely blew me away. Unfortunately, it took me a few weeks longer to actually get it, but it was well worth the wait. And let me just tell you so much. I'm actually thinking of making this phone that just costs about $350, 300 euros to make my daily driver. <laughs> yes. And which one I'm talking about? Let's just see. This is my current daily driver, the Xiaomi Mi 6. This is the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2 that unfortunately didn't get this job done. And this is the OnePlus 5T, which is up for another video. But this is what I'm talking about. The actual kind of in between the bigger brother of the Mi 6, the Xiaomi Mi Note 3, which actually should be called something like the Xiaomi Mi 6 Plus or something like that. But because it is a little bit down specced in things like, for example, the SoC. But believe me, it is actually maybe even the better product. And let's start off with a size comparison here first, just so we see because where we get from. Because I saw some people saying, in my six Mi 6 review praises that it's just too small for them. Now, if you want the bigger Mi 6, as you can see here, it's a little bit wider, but it's noticeably taller. This is what you want. So if the Mi 6 was just too small for you, you can get this. Now you might say now, why would I get the Mi Note if I can get the Mi 6? Well, as you can see, almost the same height, but it's noticeably more narrow which is fine with me and since this one has a six inch display with two by one this is pretty much the same as the 5.5 inch because that's that's the same for me just a little bit more of a tall display doesn't really change effect now here with the oneplus 5t you can see it's a little bit shorter but it is actually still a little bit more narrow which is important for me because like i said six inches worth 5.5 isn't a thing but the oneplus 5t i have to say feels noticeably thinner because for some reason the Xiaomi Mi Note 3 feels a little bit thicker than the than the Mi, uh, Mi 6, even though it's just 0.1 millimeters. But as you can see, the angle is different. We have a way bigger slope here than here. And this is just what makes the device feel a little bit thicker. But there's also one thing that I noticed, and I'm not quite sure if it's because of the black version, but I don't think so, because as you can see, the blue version here is completely flat. This is completely smooth and actually very, very grippy. Now the Mi Note has this kind of like powder coated finish, which I don't think the Mi 6 had the black version. This actually makes this a little bit slippery in terms of sides. The back though, absolutely top. Feels also super nice and solid. Of course it will attract fingerprints, but it is coated quite nice. So they are usually wiped away. Same as also on the front. You can easily wipe these away. This is not an issue at all. And it just feels completely on a flagship level. The buttons minimally wiggle like on pretty much every phone, but the position is great, great feedback. Great in and feel, everything feels so smooth. There is no edge nor nothing. As you can see here, like I said, this is a little bit slippery, but a great transition here, which is smooth. Great transition here from the flat glass. And I, I, I almost have a hard time explaining this because for some reason it feels a little bit smoother because my Mi 6 isn't quite perfectly built, which this one seems a little bit better. But for a 5.5 incher, it feels great. It's also a little bit lighter than the Mi 6 and due to being bigger, usually I prefer the premium heft, but this one doesn't have. But since it's a little bit taller than the Mi 6, therefore it's actually better because it doesn't feel like it would fall over. Super nice. The camera also, as you can see, does not stick out or actually the two, even though you should just forget the dual lens system. I will get into that later. And of course the flash. Here we have the RR blaster, microphone, dual SIM. Unfortunately, no SD card. This is a little bit of a bummer. Then the speaker here that works along with the earpiece has the dual speaker system, USB type C and the mic. We've already talked about the buttons absolutely top, a little bit higher placed than I want to. I prefer what they did on the Mi 6, but yeah, it's fine. We have a notification ID, but it's unfortunately only white. We have the same great fingerprint reader like on the Mi 6. It's super fast. With Mi UI 9, it actually got faster because as you can see, this is pretty much on a, I would say, OnePlus 5 level. 5, not 5T. We have also have capacitive buttons. But they can also lit up. I just turned that off. And you can, of course, rearrange them and have some extra options. I'll get into that later. Now, I would say the bezels are absolutely moderate. This is fine. 
and 4 or 5.5 which is definitely quite compact. Yes, we have bezels on the bottom and top, but I'm, I'm okay with that. And if someone wants to make phones smaller, just trim the top and bottom, but don't make it 2 by one I prefer 16 by 9 And since we're already talking about 16 by 9 let's talk about the display. And let me actually do one thing. Change to the default setting before anyone will complain that I did some changes here. So this is the default, which in my opinion looks a little bit boring, and that's why I'm happy that they are available. So this is it. Now let's get into the display. It is a little bit nicer calibrated than on the Mi 6, I have to say, because we still have automatic contrast, which I wouldn't just use because it just boosts the contrast in bright situations, which is short. But only here we have color temperature control, which is weird. I would really ask Xiaomi, please allow me to change that here as well, because it's still noticeably warmer than some other displays. But here it's fine. Of course, we can change the size. Double tap to wake is here available. And the brightness is also absolutely top-notch. With about 650 lux, it's on a total flagship level. Same as the otherwise qualities as well, because viewing angles are stable. Colors are absolutely nicely calibrated. It's a quite sharp display. Yes, a little bit more IPS glow than the better ones. But other than that, it's a total top display. I will just give it a very good, because I said for a great, it needs to be Quad HD these days. And I don't need 2x1 or anything like that. This is a top-notch display. I'm fully pleased. Actually, a little bit more than on the Mi 6. What have the speakers to offer? I gotta say, I am fully pleased. It's very loud, or actually, let's say at least really loud with the dual speaker arrangement. You have some sort of stereo, even though I would say use the finger, your hand to cup it to get a little bit of reflection, because otherwise it feels like there's too much sound from going on, because the earpiece is, of course, not that loud and it's usually just highs. But otherwise, really nice balance. It sounds good. Great volume, great balance and everything else. Now, in terms of the headphone jack, we don't have one, so you will need this adapter. And now I know a lot of people will complain, but I can tell you that. What's the point of having a headphone jack on a phone if on 90% of all phones, which is by now more than 200 phones that I've reviewed, this one is just not usable, at least not for me. It's usually not loud enough and it's nothing special. So here you have to use this dongle. And you have though then options here, as you can see, different presets and equalizers and so on. And what it offers is a very loud headphone jack that can actually even drive some a little bit better headphones. Of course, all earphones and a good, really good quality. So I rather have a dongle and then great sound than have a headphone jack and not even good sound. So that's just my point though. Now let's end all apps. And how much RAM do we have? This is the, I actually completely forgot how much RAM this version had. I think it should be the six gigabyte version, but I review so many phones that I actually kind of completely sometimes forget that. Where is it? I actually don't even know where the setting is. Man, that is, that is an embarrassment. I shouldn't have even mentioned it, but I can tell you that the, is it under storage? No, it's not because it's, under, it's a 64 gigabyte version. And before I make even more of a fool of on me, it just points out that it doesn't matter. The multitasking is strong. Same as also for the app launch times. As you can see, the Snapdragon 660 is definitely noticeably above a Snapdragon 625 or 630. This is actually, I would say, super close to an 835. And yes, I'm actually going to even say this is above a 621. Because maybe due to MIUI 9, it just feels fast, snappy, fluid, very consistent. So as you can see here in the browser. Everything is top. It's very responsive, a little bit of motion blur there, but I actually had a hard time comparing this side by side with my Xiaomi Mi 6, which I think is absolutely one of the like three or five best ones. And this was almost not a distinction, especially in normal daily use, it didn't matter at all because it's fluid. It's fast, it's responsive, it feels lightweight. I don't know what they exactly did with MIUI 9 here, but the animations feel so great and everything else, of course, like I said, the multitasking. I'm not the biggest fan of this multitasking animation and the double press, for example, is fast, as you can see here, but I can press once and get to the next app. It always gets me back to the old one, which is a little bit weird compared to other phones, but the multitasking is strong, <laughs> no matter which version I actually have, if I would not be that stupid. 
RAM won't work like this now. Oh, actually, yes. Yeah, six gigabytes. So that explains why multitasking is so strong. And of course, gaming performance also all absolutely on a flagship level. High frame rates, consistent. And the great thing was actually I played, like for example, Asphalt for over half an hour and the device didn't pretty much nearly at all warm up which is top, so you can play all games greatly, but the actual maybe even best thing is, it is the battery, because a full charge takes about one and a half hours, which is totally fine for the 3,500 million hour battery. But what I did not expect is that kind of battery life, because I did not actually expect it to be as good as on the Xiaomi Mi 6, because I, I, did not, I could not really comp compare the 660 to anything, because I haven't used it, but I can tell you one thing. 8% for an hour of YouTube is just something that the very best phones can reach and then real life use and I didn't actually even show yet the statistics because I want to kind of impress you, surprise you like I was impressed and surprised. 7.5 to 8 hours on mobile data, 11 to 12 hours on Wi-Fi. And over the course of two days, I still managed 7 hours. Okay, I gotta say what was a little bit weird last night when I was sleeping over the course of like six, seven hours or so, I lost 5%. So that's not great standby rain. The other days it did not work, but once you actually use it, it is so efficient. It, this is fantastic battery life. Even though the standby rain is not maybe as good as on some more stockish Android phones, battery life here is at least like about almost two hours, at least one and a half better than on the Mi 6, which was already one of the best ones. So yeah. I'm not quite else quite sure what else to say. Now software. This is the standard launcher, so no app draw, which is okay. If you want one, just use a uh, third party one. Of course, the quick settings here, like I already showed you, we have themes, very nice and customizable. You can't really customize the themes itself, but there are quite some nice ones available. What do we get in terms of features? Let me quickly show. We have, of course, the quick ball, which is a dot similar to what Huawei does, where we have some extra options and so nothing to really bother about. Buttons and gestures are nice because you can, for example, have extra shortcuts, for example, free finger shortcut, launch the camera, turn on, sc turn off the screen, turn on the torch with a double press, for example, close the current app, show menu, and as you can see, you can usually use quite some things. You can disable the button light, you can, of course, rearrange them a little bit, Headphones effects I've already showed you, of course, dual instance apps, dual window is available, where actually YouTube still plays in the background, home screen and reasons can be changed a little bit, as you can see the lock screen home, then, yeah, actually quite a lot available. Under notifications you can show the icons or not, the speed, carrier name, collapse, so yeah, as yes, you can see, you get a lot of options, but I also have to mention the not that great thing. This is still running actually the Chinese developer version, which is the newest one available, so MIUI 9, which comes with all the goodies, but not more than Chinese and English language. So if you want an international ROM, you have to rely on Xiaomi AU ROMs. I've heard that the global stable should release, should be released, but it's not the case yet. If, then you can correct me. But just for me, English was fine, but... I, I get, I'm pretty sure if I would keep it, which I'm pretty still thinking about very hardly, very heavily, then I will get the Xiaomi AU ROM because you get quite frequent updates. Even here, I get like every week an update. But one thing also, Oreo won't come for a long time. And Band 20, for example, isn't supported. But otherwise, voice quality, qu call quality was all fine and so on. Which leads me to the next thing, the camera, and I want to start off with the camera software once again, which I just started recently. But the software isn't all that great, because what I would really wish to get is actually auto HDR, because the way you access HDR is with the toggle. And you can't even directly, because it's actually weird, you have only on and off, but you have to hit this toggle. So why don't you just give me the button to turn it on and off directly without having to select it? This is weird. If there would be auto HDR on, it would be definitely way better. But that's not the case, of course, you can switch between the modes, portrait, short video, photo, beauty, square, panorama, manual. So as you can see, you get pretty much everything you want, white balance, focus and so on. Of course, here you can change the settings, gender and so on, under photo, the rest in the settings, 
as you can see here. So you get a typical design, it's fine, it gets the job done. It's nothing mind blowing, but it doesn't have to. Okay, so let's check the quick, uh, the, I mean the front facing cam, and as you can already see, this is a really great detailed picture, super. This alone would be good enough for a, for a great, as you can see here, up a little bit closer due to being a fixed focus, it's not always sharp, so you need the sweet spot which is kind of in between because fully stretched out, as you can see, it's almost a little bit blurry, but here not again. So I would say potentially great because it's not always that good as you can see here sometimes. Sometimes I had some misfires, but maybe due to the shaking or something else, but the quality on its own has the potential. As you can see here, once again, here or something did not work out properly. Yeah, otherwise, yeah. In low light conditions, you can see it's still actually holding up pretty well, which I did not expect because this is in a very dark part of the room and it still is okay. Yep, absolutely. Now video, actually I would say kind of almost great because this seems sharp, it seems smooth, detailed, good contrast. I really like the contrast of this cam. Yes, it's a little bit shaky. And it just kind of needs maybe like all the focus on the front came together great, but it's very, very close. What I have to say though is that the mic was a little bit thin, but also on one, at least on one recording I had was actually distorting for some reason, which it didn't usually, but it's just something to point out. But I'm happy with the quality. What it does though, which is a common thing though for the cam in low light conditions, as you can see here right now, now the, now the frame rate will drop. So if you record video in low light situations, that's maybe not the right thing for you, which is a little bit unfortunate. Now, without the flash and with the flash, it's fine. And here you can see, I would say this is quite good, almost actually really good because yeah, it could be a little bit sharper, more detailed, but otherwise the quality, just the pictures are good. As you can see here, once again, even close with the, with the focus towards the back and the front, yeah. Now outside, and I didn't have the best lighting conditions, and considering that, actually, I have to say the results are really, really good. I would say kind of like almost great. The autofocus, though, kind of prevents me from giving it the best result because it was very unreliable way because it wasn't on the Mi 6. I'm not quite sure. Maybe that could be fixed or it's maybe a bug of this version or so because otherwise it produces great pictures. Forget the bokeh. Forget the second lens because <laughs> the bokeh is a mess. It doesn't really work out. And as you can see here, it gets completely washed out in terms of colors. The same also goes for this two times zoom, which I didn't even include here because you can just make the picture with the main lens, crop it in and the result will be better. HDR, as you can see here, actually quite subtle, but it works out nice. So you could just leave it on because it doesn't, really, as you can see here, the, the bokeh is just a joke. But the quality here, once again, super nice, detailed, sharp, great colors, great contrast here with all the HDR once again. Great contrast. I really like what the cam does. Now 4K, the only thing that really prevents me from giving it a great or maybe even an almost great is that there's too much artifacting going on. So they should either maybe bump up the bitrate or use just H.265 because the, what I really like is how smooth the video is. But as you can also see, the autofocus is super subtle. It's also optically stabilized. So even though it has some shake, as you can see here, it's a very natural shake. And I kind of prefer this over the complete over extreme kind of like gimbal like stabilization. Of course, this it doesn't really work so much with the focus, as I said, but picture usually is nice, crisp, sharp, smooth, detailed. What it's not really on 1080p, as you can see here, because 1080p looks a little bit worse. It, it's not with the artifacting anymore. The autofocus is still good, but, but it loses just, in my opinion, a little bit too much sharpness, which which is just not that great. And I'm kind of searching my, okay. Nah. <laughs> Something went wrong. Okay, so really quick. Because here we have it. I think I will just cut this part. And let's now get to the pros and cons. Build quality, great premium build, absolutely on a flagship level. Design, great, superb in and feel, very comfortable, great button placement, ergonomy, super great. Fingerprint reader, great. And it also comes with face unlock, which actually works really good unless you are in super dark situations. Display, very good in all aspects. Only like I said, the, the higher resolution kind of, or the lack of it prevents a higher rating. Speaker, 
really good dual speaker system. Headphone jack is actually very good because very loud, high quality and very customizable. Performance, I, I will give it a top notch. Pretty much indistinguishable from the best flagships. It's so minimal because it's so overall fluent, consistent and just top. Yeah. Absolutely. Battery, fantastic. Nothing comes close to this at this performance level, in my opinion. Absolutely fantastic. Software, very good. Many settings and frequent updates, but not for everyone. It's just not a UI that everyone will like. And Oreo will take ages. Front-facing cam, potentially great. Unfortunately, the focus is fixed like on most phones. The front-facing video cam is almost great. Low-light cam is quite good. Main cam is potentially great, but the autofocus was quite unreliable and all the HDR would have been nice. Video cam, very good, but a little bit too much artifacting visible during movement, which, which kind of prevents the higher rating. And the value, in my opinion, is excellent, but usually it has to be imported. Now, a few extra notes. Sides are slightly more slippery than on most phones. Forget the second lens. Like I said, bokeh and two times zoom are a joke. Video mic sounds a bit thin and sometimes distorts a bit, which is not that much of an issue, but it's thin. Video frame rate slows down in low light conditions. No band 20, no global ROM yet, but at least Xiaomi EU ROMs are available. And in my opinion, kind of unbeatable overall package at this price. And for some reason, my hotkeys don't work. So let me get to the final conclusion, which will actually be quite quick. This is an excellent phone with an excellent price point with pretty much no real flaws. Okay, if the camera, for example, on the few things that I've mentioned is a thing that breaks it for you, okay. But other than that, it is so, so good. You get all the features and you pretty much, you pretty much get the Xiaomi Mi 6, a little bit bigger with better battery life. What do you lose? The autofocus is a little bit more flaky. You don't get quite the ROM support from Xiaomi itself, but otherwise that's it. You get a better front facing cam. You get pretty much the exact same main cam. Performance is pretty much identical in normal use. I would not really notice if I wouldn't review so many phones and watch that closely. The speaker is pretty much the same. The display is actually even a little bit better. It doesn't, of course, quite feel as compact, but therefore it's a little bit lighter, actually easier to hold for some reasons, even though it's more slippery. So it's fantastic. I love it. And that's why I think I will actually make this even my daily driver. I needed a long time for it, like five weeks longer than I should have, but this is kind of the near perfect phone. And this is just for $350 or 300 euros. Now let's just see what you get. For example, in many, many aspects, this gets very close to something like a, like a OnePlus 5T that costs a lot more. Yes, you don't get the two by one design and maybe the, the, the metal build and such things, but I am extremely impressed. I don't really, after like the two, three weeks that I had it, think of anything that I don't really like so much. If it would be as grippy as the Mi 6, that's that's a minor thing. I would really this is this is not a thing. I'm I'm I would now have to try to find something like have to nitpick like the the nitpicker that I am. But really, even then, I have a hard time. So I'm kind of finishing this off. You let me know in the comments what you want to know, and uh, um, unless I maybe didn't cover it, but I'm confused right now already about how good this phone is because, like for example, Tech Tablet said, it's pretty much just a bigger Mi Six with a better front facing cam. I, I think it's actually more than that because the overall package with the better battery life and the slightly better display is, is even more around the package and package. And this now is 5.5 inches. This is the size that most people want because 5.15 on the Mi 6 is too small for many. And for everyone who was thinking that way, you have the perfect alternative. Yep. Until next time. Bye.